So welcome to Knox and in this episode we have spent the last two days taking these three very different off-road bikes to the test here in the beautiful English Lake District on the trails that we've got. I've got two beautiful assistants with me both Chris Moss and Jeff as well and um, we're going to be having a conversation about each one of them, the whys, the wherefores, the pluses and the minuses, so stick around and stay tuned. Amongst riding all types of road bikes and on track, we're avid off-road trail riders here at Knox. Luckily, we've got the beautiful English Lake District as our backdrop, and it's also home to some excellent legal trail. And it's this setting that makes the context of this test, legal trail riding. Our typical Lake District trail ride often involves a wide range of terrain, from flat and easy stuff perfect for adventure bikes, through to tougher, sharp, rocky sections with inclines and declines, and of course the sections of road that join the trails together. That makes choosing the best bike to tackle the job a largely subjective and personal choice. For example, you might choose a KTM 152 stroke, which is the lightest road legal option available, but it's going to be hard work on the tarmac roads. On the other side, you might choose a 250 kilo adventure bike, which will be perfect on the road and easy terrain, but the hard stuff, well, rather you than me. So in this test, we've put our own Husqvarna 701 Enduro and Yamaha WR250F into the ring alongside a guest, a Gas Gas EC300. All these bikes are immensely capable in their own right and would rightly be considered by any trail rider but which one comes out on top? Right, so you falling off. <laughs> First up, the Gas Gas EC300 is the most focused bike on our test. Its 300cc two-stroke motor, the choice of every successful hard enduro rider, with outrageous power and snap, and is by far the most stall-resistant motor on our test. Coming off 1000cc superbikes, the sound of a 300cc two-stroke may sound like a walk in the park. But make no mistake, the EC300 demands serious respect, but more on that later. It's also the lightest, weighing in at 106 kilos with half a tank of fuel in it, some 6 kilos lighter than the WR250F and around 45 kilos lighter than the 701 Enduro. Playing into its lightweight structure is the lack of engine braking that the two-stroke motor provides, allowing you to change direction effortlessly and tackle hard terrain easier than the other two bikes, with confidence and without stalling. Suspension on the Gas Gas is provided by WP. This felt the softest and most compliant, geared towards tight and technical riding and perfect for non-competitive trail riding. We all commented that the softness of the suspension on the EC300 enabled us to get on and off the bike easier than the others, as the shock compresses the seat to a lower height when you swing your leg over it. While this is not a performance orientated issue, it combines with its uber lightweight to offer confidence to shorter riders like Mossy and Jeff. But the real beauty of the Gas Gas is the flexibility of the motor. It may be the choice of engines for professional enduro riders who use the raw power to scale impossible hill climbs with about a two foot run up, but for us mere mortals, we found clicking it up a few gears mellows the bike out beautifully. It still won't stall, but it will drive you up and down pretty much anything you point it at. So first off, the Gas Gas EC300 TPI bike, this two-stroke. So it's different to the other ones that we've got. And probably the most famous enduro bike, the 300 two-stroke. Do you, do you mean the them? brand Gas Gas? No, the no, model. No, the model, the model. Yeah, right. You know, so this would be like, if you're going to go to a hard enduro event, you know, nine out of 10 riders are going to be on a 
300 two stroke. Mm. It's, it's been designed for really rough terrain. First impressions for you guys? Uh, for me, getting off the 701 and, and, and then the, the, the Yamaha, I, this thing just feels so light and so flickable. You can just move with it. And, you know, you want to you want to change where you are. It just goes with you, and and the power in it. You just tweak the throttle, and and boom, you're there. Kind of thing. It's I think it's unbelievable. Serious bit of kit. <laughs> yeah. Serious bit of kit. Now, um, do you know what? I think it's a man's bike, and. Uh, on many occasions, I felt Careful. like a small boy. Mm. Um, you've got to, its potential is massive. The throttle response is so sharp. That's the outstanding feature. For me. But you've got to respect that. You've got to try and control it. Someone like Johnny Walker would just jump on this and make fun of it. But an aver a more average guy like myself, um, I, I, I was really thrilled by it but I was constantly aware of the fact that this could bite. I've got a Jack Russell right, which if I treat nicely, is very loving. If I don't, he goes to snap me. And I was reminded of that dog every time I rode this. Uh, I think it's wonderful, and it's arguably the best and most capable of these three, but it takes a lot of time to get the best from it. Well, we're liking a lot of this bike, actually, oh, guys. No, I really like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good. Absolutely. Bit. Any downsides? Yeah, it's got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many out of ten, then? Are you worried? I think I'd give it a nine. I, you? I, I would <laughs> genuinely. I would give this bike a, a nine to ten out of ten. Yeah. Whether or not, though, you know, that's a, a score. But whether or not it's a bit much for me. Uh, jury's out on that one yep, in okay. terms of the, the power and its capability. I'm not sure I'd be quite ready for the 300 because it is, it's like, like we said, you know, it's a bit of an expert bike, yep, yep. you know, and I still want to learn. I've still got learning to do, you know. I think that's that. That is it. I I probably would also give it a 10 out of 10. The only problem is my ability is about six. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem. I give a Formula One car a 10 out of 10, but whether I can drive it round. Do you know what, though, if you enough. had that for a year, I know, your I know. abilities would yeah. start to close yeah, yeah. on it. Absolutely, yeah. 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 You'd it. only be a mile off after a year. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. right. <laughs> no, right. really, re a great experience, wasn't it, Rodney? Yes. Great experience. Yamaha's WR250F is arguably the most famous trail bike here. Previous models to our 2020 version considered too soft, heavy and less capable when compared to the modern Austrian equivalent enduro bikes. But their softness made the WR the almost perfect trail bike, ideal for terrain less severe than competition circuits, generally more reliable and very user friendly. But for 2020, that all changed. With a massively revised engine and frame derived from the YZ motocross machine, the WR promised to be lighter, faster, more accurate and ultimately more capable. And it is, you really have to remind yourself that you're actually only riding a 250 single cylinder. It's genuinely fast, it's got a very strong mid-range and it revs to the moon. It's also lightweight and we measured it at 112 kilos. Having owned the WR a few years now, we'd certainly say it suits a more fast-paced terrain. Its engine character working better at higher speeds and its harder sprung suspension, only starting to feel plush once the impacts get harder. If you like to ride fast, do the odd motocross race and have a reliable bike, you can't go far wrong with the WR. However, the Yamaha does have some significant downsides. Firstly, it can be horrendously stall happy. This makes any hard and technical riding very difficult. 
It takes some real finesse, practice and clutch slipping to make the bike work on technical terrain. The engine braking is also quite harsh, making a sharp on-off throttle at low speed. And while turning the idle up does help, it doesn't solve the issue entirely. But how did it get on in our test? So next up is a WR250F. This is our own motorcycle. It's really heavily revised in 2019. Obviously we're on to sort of 22 now, but more or less the bikes are pretty much, the, you know, what they are in, in terms of comparing it to what this is. What have, you, what have your impressions been? Slightly sort of more anonymous uh, compared to the 300, and I'd compare it directly to that because this is a proper enduro style bike as well. Yeah. I think it's the more stylish of the three. Yes. I think it rides really well, but that sort of sharp clutch action that it's got, and that tendency to stall and get a bit fluffy just off the closed throttle, that it sort of helped me fill my swear box a few times, you know. I think it is a very, very good bike, but I just it, it just doesn't have that same excitement factor as the Gas Gas. There's no way that I can really get super keen and super excited about it in the same fashion that I can about that 300. But very, very good and capable bike. Can't, can't knock it as such apart from those details which occasionally made it a bit tricky to master. Well, hey, you know, in what you said about the fluffiness and the stalling has, has driven me to distraction today. <laughs> you know, because at the moment, you're not on the throttle, the thing just like dies on you. Now, I don't know whether that's because we haven't got it quite tuned right or something or, or, the, or the, the fueling quite right, but actually when it's going, it's, it, it's absolutely fabulous. I, I really like the bike. My only criticism is, is that it's quite tall. Mm. What, Jeff, what, what, what about the suspension? Did you think that was a bit too firm or were you all right with it? No, no, I think the suspension is really good. I okay. Do. Yeah, I do. Oh, I, 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 love the w, I love this WR250F, I, I really do. But it's quite a frustrating motorcycle, I, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, you, you know, look, we've owned it. We've, we've ridden it quite a bit. We've tried really hard to set it up correctly and I still find it quite frustrating. It has a massive tendency to stall. As you buy them out of the showroom, you can't run them. You know, they, they will genuinely, they won't run. They come with this baffle inserted and you cannot like set off, it just stalls. It's a nightmare. So I mean, gotta... in fairness, I've ridden them at the Yamaha off-road set. Ah, but they'll have, had, they'll, they'll have had them set up. Uh, yeah. You know, and there's no felt... way that they're putting people yeah, on them. Yeah, bikes. they felt fine. So it's yeah. got the potential. Oh, yeah, Massively. 100%. This bike's got such a lot of potential, but you need to make some changes. You need to take the baffle out, the, you need to take the throttle resistor out. Uh, there's like a screw inside it you need to take out, cut that down. That'll give you your full throttle. I think it's a massively capable bike. And actually for this iteration of the WR, there, there was quite a big step on in the motor. And, you know, yeah, this is a two, you have to bear in mind, this is a 250 single cylinder four yeah, stroke. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something, you get this on, on, on the pipe, it's such a thingy word to say, but get you, know, you spinning, get, you get strong, this spinning. This is fast as anything, this, yeah. this engine, but the setup is really finicky. And I think the other thing that they did for this uh, model is they put the electronic sort of power mapping in so you can map it via your phone. But while they did that, they simultaneously forgot how to, to, you know, tell, to tell people how, how to, to, how to use the bloody thing. <laughs> and, and therefore, you know, that's been a, a, a bit of a contentious issue because we've got this app, we've got this mapping thing, but there's, there's not actually any good information out there. So, you know, I think it will benefit quite a lot by getting some professional to oh, look at it. I mean, absolutely. We're, we're actually going to a dino shop um, in a few weeks time aren't we so i might actually ask him to look at that i want a bit less engine braking you know i want a little bit less snappy i want the the, the clutch yeah i just want it to stall a little bit less sure. and and at that point i think you've got a phenomenally capable motorcycle albeit i think the suspension setup for this is a bit more um, competition 
Yeah, it's a bit more uh, oriented towards going faster. Yeah. And, yep. you know, if you took this to a motocross track, I'm pretty sure you could, you know, race this as a motocross bike because the suspension is firmer. It's going to take the jumps better. You know, the gas gas, on the other hand, would probably bottom out as soon as you started to do the big jumps. Uh, I think this would... Not too sure about that. Not too oh. sure about that. This is, this is harder. It's a harder yeah. setup. There's no, no yeah. doubt, is there? Massive plus point, mind you. Reliability. And one of the reasons why we went for the, for the Yamaha is that um, this is the bike of choice for Red Tread in Spain. Yeah. And we obviously know him yeah, really yeah. well, the sponsor of the school. Um, but Ed had a, uh, either a 250 or a 450. And, you know, this is competition machines. You're meant to sort of change the oil and check the, um, the clearances and stuff every so many hours. Where well, he ran one for 2,000 hours before he checked any of the valves or did anything with it other than changing the gearbox oil. And, and he checked it and it was still in spec. And he, so he said when we bought this, he was like, you know, all you need to do, lads, change the oil. And, and there you go. That's probably not an official recommendation, but it's it's more of a, no, but it's real. It's Aaron's... more of a mention about how how good on the reliability front. And that's a massive thing when you get into this in competition bike. Yes, you do need to service them more, don't you? Yeah. I mean, tough tough environment, isn't it? Even trail riding, I and mean, to know that you've got something that's just going to do the distance and not give you any reliability issues, I think is a very good thing. Finally, the 701 Enduro. Unlike the Gas Gas and Yamaha, the 701 Enduro is a best of both worlds dual sport machine. We weighed the bike at 148 kilos with a bit of fuel in it, so it's around 45 kilos heavier than the other bikes on test. While the 701 shouldn't be as capable as the other two bikes, other than full-on hard enduro terrain, we haven't found anything it can't do. In an off-road trail riding setting, it just does everything. It plows through all terrain, it's extra ballast giving it a plush and more relaxed feel. Plus, it goes without saying, the 701 enduro tackles the road going work the best. On our bike, we've changed up the tyres to the Dunlop D908RRs, We've opened up the lock stops for an improved turning circle and we've fitted the bike with crash protection. These simple and cost effective upgrades have made our 701 much better for trail riding. The 74 horsepower single cylinder is simply brilliant. It's beautifully fueled, has loads of power and yet is friendly and it makes for a bike that puts a massive grin on your face. The on-off throttle is much smoother than the Yamaha and it's much less prone to stalling. Although of course it can't match the two-stroke smoothness on and off the throttle. Due to the longer road gearing, we're running first gear on most technical inclines, but we haven't found that to be a problem. Despite its extra weight and the fact that on paper at least, the 701 should have been the worst and most intimidating bike to ride. But everyone on test ended up more than confident on it. And funnily enough, it was the only one we didn't fall off. And the last bike, the 701 Enduro. What do you think? Uh, hey, do you know what? <clears throat> Engine-wise, out of the three, I think that this is this is a peach because it is so soft. In, in, it's got masses of power, but it but when you close the throttle, it, it just it just chugs away. It's, it's not even chugs. It's so smooth. It's absolutely brilliant. But my God. When you go from one bike to the other, you realise that, that that is it's got some bloody timber on it. That has. <laughs> <laughs> Good expression. It's got some junk in its trunk. <laughs> However, I think it's a very different cup of tea to the other two. I've done a lot of miles on both this model and the 690 KTM, which is very similar. 
Um, easily the most versatile. I mean, bigger, taller, heavier, less manageable at times, but this is a bike you don't need a van to carry around. You can ride it to your trails. I rode a 690 to the Italian Alps and rode around the Italian Alps and back home again. You could do it with this easily. You can't do that on the other two. And in seeing it's big and heavy and less agile than the other two, when I got on it for the first time yesterday, within about 100 yards, I went, hang on a minute, this is all right, this, you know. It's still an enduro motorbike, isn't it? It's not a big, fat adventure bike. This is a proper bit of kit. You're getting off these competition bikes and you start, it, you know, even as you're pushing it around, you can feel like there's got another easy 50 kilos on, on them. And, and, you know, they're snappy, they're ad they're, they're frantic, they're skipping around and you get on this and you think, well, it's got a bit more ballast on it. But take it the flip side, if we'd have been on adventure bikes and we brought this one into the test, oh, no, this, would, this would honestly, yeah. this would eat them for breakfast good, good in point. terms yeah, of the... Yeah. the um, for me, this bike is, it, it surprises me every time and that's one of the reasons why I really love it. Um, you know, because I just... You know, when you compare the two and you think, well, they're competition bikes, they'll be better off-road and so on and so forth. And of course, in a, in a competition environment, a really hard and rough terrain environment. There will be. There will be. But for the trail, I mean, you know, flying up there today, it's like, God, there's not a lot wrong with this, you know. It's friendly, isn't it? It's, it's I mean, friendly. 70 odd horsepower, 160 kilos might sound as though it was get out of hand. But it's it's a real mate, isn't it? And it costs it you. I've actually become, despite it having a lot of power, I've become quite confident on this mm. on this bike. Don't believe you. You know, we've done a couple of hill climbs on it. We've done some, you know, steep descents and so on. I've become really confident on it, and you know, the power doesn't actually intimidate us anymore. It's you know, be like it's, Jeff it's, said, it's, it's, it's beautifully it's delivered, isn't it? Yeah, it's no no lovely fueling. There are scares on it. No. No, that's the thing. I, you know, just even on the, the 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 more open trails, and you get a puddle, and you just hunk it up, and yeah, you know, no, no, it's hunk true. the wheelie it's up true. and stuff, and it's, it's just true. It's just brilliant, and I love the fact that you can ride here in in relative comfort. You know, it's also uh, it's a really surprising bike. Yes, got no right to be as good as it is in many ways. No, I mean you, you could ride that from here to Salisbury Plain and have a good fool about there, or the trails in Wales, even better. Oh. and come back and it would suit the job perfectly well yeah yeah really absolutely versatile. it's really versatile and the only you, you know on the trail depending on what kind of trail it is but if it's nagery you do feel a little bit more of the weight in in flicking side to side but actually in reality the only time i suppose that you you kind of notice the bulk of it is when it's lying on top of you, yeah. upside down. I can vouch for this. I can vouch for this. Yeah, and that's an important point. You know, I've 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 been up here on my own, and I've done a few hill climbs on my own, and I've and I've cocked it up, and the, you know, it's been a heavy bike to move when it's facing the wrong side down a hill. Whereas you can manage some of that the stuff. Other two, yeah. and, and, and we had a crash, and, and it landed on you as well. Yeah. And you know, you couldn't have moved it. I, so I was pinned you got, underneath. You, like the 300, you've also got to treat this with a little bit of respect. Yes. Because you give this the whiskey throttle as well. It's massively powerful. It will show you the fact that it's 150 kilos um, when you're underneath it, unlike the other ones. But that all being said, I, I've. I've this is this process has re-excited me about this motorcycle yeah. thing. So, oh. so do you think that there isn't there isn't a clear favourite or? Well, <laughs> right for what we've just done. Sixty million dollar question. For what we've just done, two days in the lakes, and if you were to do it all again, which of these three would you choose? I I would really love to do the whole thing again only riding the gas gas because I think then I could get a really good feel of the, of the whole range of what we've done on one bike and I think it's been really helpful swapping all the time because you do get oh god I, you know I love that about that and or I love this about this bike and 
But nevertheless, I think I agree with you what you said earlier, Mossy, that you need more time on it to really fully understand it. Oh, big star, yeah. I think for me personally, if we were going to do the trails that we've done again, I would almost be tending to take the 701 because I think it's a bit of a friendly bear and I'm quite yeah, confident good, on it. Good, good and, description. And I just like it. I've just been blown away by yeah, it again. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's reinvigorated me. It's hard uh, to dislike, isn't it? Really, yeah. What about you, Mossy? Uh, I'm, I'm, do you know what? I was a bit uncertain, but since you've said that, I, I, you couldn't have said it better, I think. I don't know. It, it's either this or the 300, but ask me yeah. again in five minutes. It could be different. Yeah, and, and if you say, look, you know, we're going to come and have a play in this area. We've got some hill climbs. We've got some, you know, more challenging stuff that we're going to do i'd give you a totally different answer yeah but if we're going to do you know the trails that we did again i, I would choose this and, and, and a close second yeah. for the for the gas gas yeah probably my least favorite has been the wr yeah but we'll also caveat that with the fact that i think that we can improve the setup of it yeah it would be quite a bit better and a lot less less frustrating wouldn't it with yeah. just a tiny tweak here, yeah you know? and, and and it's whether it's that's within the parameters of what it can do as well because i i'm not 100 percent sure you can make that roll into corners better reduce the engine braking reduce the stalliness i'm not sure you can do that with with that bike but you know jury's out and we'll, i'm sure we'll have an update at some point uh, i think one thing we can be sure of is that it's getting dark and it's going to start chucking it down not <laughs> just there minute. but here any uh, minute. Should we call it a day? Yeah, I think or we should. Two. Yeah. Look, so thanks very much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. It's been a really interesting process for all of us, I think. I'll tell you, man, if you do what we've done, I'll guarantee you will be smiling for many a day. Oh, yeah, 100%. Great, great, great memories, fun. great fun. Yeah. Um, so look, please let us know what you think in the comments section. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out the Nox range of all the gear that we use to protect us on. Uh, test on the trail on the road and we'll see you next time.